This is, uh, thank you for the warm welcome. This is my first time in Brisbane, and I tell you, the best winter ever. <laughs> I come from Washington, D.C., where last winter, the coldest was minus 18, I believe. I was trying to do the conversion there, and at my house, I had three foot of snow. And yesterday, just walking along the river by that man-made beach, people sunbathing, winter time, I think I might move down here. So again, thank you and welcome to this session on this concept and idea of how we fast-track PPM success. What tools should we use to deliver effective project management? And certainly, we'll talk about a lot of different things and concepts, but we all know, and I'm sure you've gone to a lot of different sessions already, talking about how the world of project management is changing. You know, I started my career in project management about 15, 16 years ago. Prior to that, I was a programmer. I started my programming career in Assembler. Anybody know what Assembler is? If you don't, you weren't born yet. And boy, a lot has changed in the last 16 years. And this change is actually very exciting because it opens a lot of new opportunities for us project managers. So let's see what's going on in the world today, shall we? Today, people are more connected than ever before through social networks, through the cloud, through mobile devices. The world has become a giant network. And every second, people are sharing, learning, and making decisions on the go. They're all part of one hyper-connected world. These are your customers. They expect faster responses, personalized service, better experiences. As a business, you have to always be listening to your customers. Anticipate trends. Take action. And adapt quickly, no matter what comes your way. So you can always stay one step ahead. You need the latest information at your fingertips to make fully informed decisions. And as a business, you can give your customers exactly what they want, when they want it. So they walk away with experiences as unique as they are. What if you were connected to everything important? What if you and every person in your company could work together like a network? Suddenly, you're plugged into everything that matters to your business. You're social and collaborating in new ways, exchanging ideas with people across the globe. You're always listening to your employees, customers, and partners. You spot new opportunities to adapt quickly and make change happen. You share documents and information in real time and make decisions faster than ever. When you're working together as one connected network, you can grow your business. You understand your customers, you build better products, and you deliver the best experiences. This is the power of a network. Now's the time to start working like one. So, it's indeed an exciting time, but you and I know, while that video looks great, I want to live in that world, that's not a reality. You agree? I mean, this is our reality. You guys know this company? Some of you do. I mean, just a quick review here. Blockbuster went uh, public in 1999, big American video rental company, and they made their money by renting out DVDs. And they raised a lot of money in 1999. And around the same time, there's a guy named Reed Hastings who got tired of paying late fees because he was always late, returning his DVDs. He decided, I'm going to start a company called Netflix. Around that time, Blockbuster were like, whatever, it's overnight fad, nobody's going to watch videos on the internet, who's going to do that? <laughs> and then, soon after that, 2004, Blockbuster would keep on growing and growing, and at the peak, they had 9,000 stores. In fact, in 2004, their CFO decided, we're going to reallocate our online streaming budget to opening more stores. And around the same time, YouTube was growing. Hulu came up. A lot of these video streaming technologies for the web started to gain traction. In 2010, Blockbuster filed bankruptcy. 2013, the company was non-existent. Okay, ducks, 
I still don't get it. You talk about this changing world, work like a network, we're in a PMI conference, and, and you're, you're saying we live in this world as project managers? I think so. Because one of the things that's ironic in this day and age of iPhone 6, oh, sorry, Microsoft, Windows Phone, <laughs> Fitbit, Tebow, DDR, we still manage and run projects how we did 10 years, 20 years. I would even say 50 years ago. Well, Doug, you talk about Blockbuster. I mean, these are all the recent tech failures. I can throw in their AOL, Netscape. No, this has happened a lot. Do you know the Facebook of the 1920s, who the Facebook was back then? If I want to remind you, it's Bethlehem Steel. There's an American company called Bethlehem Steel. In the early 1900s, they're like the Facebook. They built modern America as it is today. But we can't be. The problem, friends, we have is as organizations, as project teams, we're still stuck in this industrial mindset model, which is not, not wrong or not bad, but we're not quick enough to adapt to this changing world. Okay? So, so what's changing, Ducks? Why do we have to adapt as project managers? A lot has changed. I mean, used to be, because technology wasn't there, we had no choice but to wait. Waterfall model was on vogue running projects because we don't get feedback right away. We want to build a new product. For example, in the 40s, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a project manager for this new product. We build it, we make it, uh, our processes efficient, we put it out to market, and we won't get anything or any feedback from our customer not until nine months later, a year later, because the mechanism wasn't there. Y'all with me? But today, if you want to know if a restaurant's good or bad, you don't just go in there and have dinner. What do you do? You just want to go. You go to some restaurant review website to see if it's good or bad and see what the feedback looks like. We get rapid feedback, rapid innovation, and in how are we engaged? How are we equipped to do this as project managers when we work on projects? Second, back then, information was scarce. You only have so much to get by for today, tomorrow, in three months. But today, data is all over the place. In fact, I would argue it's too much information. You know, 10 years ago when the website came out, they said, oh, content is king. I question that now. Today, content is not king. Context is king. Tweet that. <laughs> Before we think of work as a physical location, I go to the office, I clock in at 8, I clock out at 5, I'm done. Well, today work is global. In fact, do you know in the Western economies, an average person has four devices he or she interacts with every single day? You don't believe me? I mean, what's the first thing you do when you wake up? You pick up your phone. Look at your newsfeed. Who liked your picture last night at Facebook? Maybe you check email. You start responding to your boss. You get changed. You wait for the bus on your iPad. You continue responding to that project status email. And then at work, you finish that email on your work computer. It's called work shifting. 24-7 project management. That's the world we live in. Used to be, and we still do it today, we're very reactive as project managers. When I when I uh, started to be a project manager, my um, I was reading some book. Right, it says if you're a good project manager, you can fight fires all the time. Well, that's a load of BS. Because if all you do is be reactive and firefighting, you're not managing your project appropriately. We have the great opportunity, friends, to be responsive as project managers today. What's going on in this world? A lot's happening. But one thing for sure, if I can make my remote work, see, I don't have enough devices. Shift happens. See, I just blew my joke. Anyway, <laughs> trying to be all fancy. I should have used my Apple Watch. Right now, now why, why, why is this important? Yeah? Because the speed of information drives change. 
We live in a world where companies are buying companies. Projects succeed or fail due to immediate feedback. But if we are honest with ourselves as project managers, are we embracing this? Are we open enough to change, and I'm not saying big changes, how we work, how we engage with our project teams, with our customers, and our stakeholders? You know, if, if, if you tell me, docs, you don't understand. I work in the government. Everything is so slow in the government. There's no way we can change government. I don't buy that. I live and work in Washington, D.C. You know, I always get these excuses. They can't do anything about it. This is how government works. I mean, true to a certain extent. But remember, because of that one bad feedback, restaurants can close. One great review on Amazon or a hundred great reviews, suddenly business skyrockets. What do we do with these information? If the rate of change on the outside exceeds the rate of change on the inside, the end is near. And it's becoming truer and truer these days. The question here, the question here for us as project managers, what are we doing about this? Now, as project managers, I believe we have a new role that we have to undertake, you like it or not. As project managers today in 2015, we should be responsive business enablers. On the count of three, you're going to repeat that with me, all right? One, two, three, responsive business enablers. Our job is not enough if we tick the box on schedule, on scope, on budget. That's not enough. Our job is to help our business through projects and make sure it's successful, measured by business value and lasting impact. And the way we do this, we work hand in hand and partner with the business. Second, we deliver business value quickly and iteratively. In the last few years, the concept of agile, scrum, iterative project management is on both because there's a good reason for it. We can't afford to wait. And then third, which I'm going to talk about in detail in this session, is how do we take advantage of technology to help us? We may say we're all fancy, we're all sophisticated with all new gadgets, but let me ask you this. What's the most used project management tool today? PMI actually did a global survey about three years ago asking all PMPs, what's the number one project management tool you cannot live without? Anybody want to take a guess? Excel is number three. Outlook email is number one. In 2015, the most used project management tool is a 1973 technology called Frickin' Email. <laughs> no. Where's that status report? Let me check my email. Where's that requirement stuff? Let me check my email. Where's that budget? Let me check my email. You guys remember when you took the PMP exam? Inputs, tools, and outputs. And in the tool section, there's this thing called PMIS, Project Management Information System. Y'all with me? And the idea of PMIS is to be the keychain that will hold everything together for your project, from schedules to artifacts, communication. And guess what? Email is the PMIS that we rely on. What's wrong, Doc? It works. It does. But in most cases, it doesn't. And the good news is, I'm not saying we kill email. Email has its place. There are technologies today at the palm of your hands. As you walk out, you can maximize. When we think about project management, there's a lot of different scenarios. It can be a very simple ad hoc project that the marketing team is engaging with vendors. Or it can be a, a more mature project engagement where we have processes you have to uh, uh, consider. Organizational resources, a portfolio you look after. And the nature of projects are becoming more and more diverse and complex today. And yet email is still holding everything together for us. We can do better. So how do we do that, right? How do we do that? The good news is, in a lot of organizations today, most of the investments are around the Microsoft suite of technologies. 
Email Outlook, you can say, is a number one project management tool for Microsoft. They, they don't want to admit that, but that's true. Yet there's other choices and possibilities you get from other tools as well. So what do we have, right? When do we use what? So if you think about projects and project management, I would consider there's three major categories of projects. The first category, I would say, it's very informal, very ad hoc, couple people working together, we're just tracking tasks, I don't really need a full-blown project schedule or project plan. If you're in that situation, a technology you can take advantage of is called SharePoint. You know about SharePoint? Yeah. I know some of your companies call it SharePoint. SharePoint's great. And I'll show you how you take advantage of that for project management in the future. The second category I would think about in terms of project is as it gets more advanced, where you work with a team, where scheduling uh, requires some dependencies. In addition to SharePoint, you can take advantage of Microsoft Project Professional, and a lot of us should be familiar with that. It's, it's a tool you install on your computer, you create a Gantt chart. You all use Microsoft Project? Do you remember your first experience with Microsoft Project? I do. It was like uh, that first bad date I had in high school. No offense, because I was a programmer. In 1997, my boss was like, OK, you're going to work on this new release of this code. Use Microsoft Project to build your state. Like, ah, how hard could this be? I'm an engineer. I know how to use Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Project. Ha. So I turned up Microsoft Project, and I'm staring at it for three hours. I didn't know what to do with it. In fact, that's still true in a lot of organizations where Microsoft Project, people use it, create a nice schedule, nice colorful Gantt chart, make a printout, everybody gets a copy, and it's the end of Microsoft Project. I'm talking about me. It was not. It's true. But fast forward 16, 17 years, boy, it's a brilliant, brilliant technology. And I'll show you and talk to you about when or how you should take advantage of it. Lastly, if you're working on as an organization, you're looking at programs and portfolio, you need to prioritize your demand. You need to look at your investments and have visibility into how you're spending your organization's uh, resources. Project online or project server would certainly support and help what you do. The beauty with Microsoft, while there's a lot of great tools out there, more and more you're seeing how Microsoft is being open and wanting to make sure that the tool set are comprehensive. Depending on your project management needs, there's a tool for you. And it's supporting multi-devices. You don't have to have a Windows machine, in fact. You can use your iPad, your Mac, your Android. And you're seeing a lot of these news coming out about Microsoft being more aggressive in cross-platform, cross-devices capability. And then lastly, Microsoft gives you the option to do it in-house or their new cloud offerings. So, it's all good, Docs. I understand the world is changing, everything's moving so fast, we can't keep moving the way we used to, and I understand that technology can help us. All right, now, can you shed some light on which tool should I use? You know, in, in my organization, there's this stigma with project management tools. Come on, let's face it, I mean, we're project managers, these tools are great. But at the end of the day, generally speaking, our, most of folks in the organization don't really care for these tools. Would you agree? For example, who has Project Server in your company? Okay, with those hands up, who in your company loves Project Server? Every single person. No. Yeah. And that's a sad fact. But I gotta tell you though, when you go back to a company and you see those people who hate Project Server and they tell you again for the nth time, Project Server sucks. Look at them straight in the eye and say, Project Server doesn't suck. You suck. <laughs> it's a tool. You're a tool. Yeah. No. So, how do we use the right solution? Three steps, and I'll show you all these different solutions. The first step, if you, if you think about a technology or a tool, the tool should be able to support you as project managers to collaborate quickly and efficiently, get everybody on the same page right away. Okay? What do we mean by that? If you think about the life cycle of a project, 
Let's say I get assigned a project today. My boss calls me on Hey Docs. There's this new opportunity. I think we're gonna, you know, pursue this project. Why don't you do a quick analysis, put together a team, if that's something worthwhile? Our normal reaction would be, especially in less mature organizations, you're gonna fire an email. Hey, uh, David, uh, boss just told me to do this. Uh, I know you worked on this last year. Can you send me some documents or templates? Send. And that's fine. But the, you know where that goes. As this engagement happens, the email snowballs, people get CC'd, and all these attachments come, people start talking. It's a mess. Yes? So how can we improve that? That's where a tool like SharePoint comes in. SharePoint allows, to quickly, allows you to quickly get started and have your PMIS set up providing a one-stop shop so that you as an organization or as a project team can maintain organizational standards, engage with relevant stakeholders. So the idea is, let's say, you know, when your project is going to be initiated, part of your process is create project site. So let me show you quickly. So what I've got here, and it's straightforward, uh, let's see. Okay, so this is Friends, this is uh, my organization's internet. Very simple. I didn't put any, you know, advanced stuff. This is all out of the box. So as a part of our process, we just had a, a, a new project come in, and I was the PM. So okay, I'm going to create a new project. So when I click on create a new project, it's going to take me to a page. What project do you want to work on, Docs? And the beauty of this is you can define specific project templates, and not only a template for a site, but everything around the project. So for example, if it's a software development project, you want to put all the checklists and schedule and diagrams in there as a template, you can certainly do so. It makes it much, much easier for project managers. So let's say I just want to use this uh, simple template and let me hit next. As soon as I hit next, friends, it's going to take me to a page. What are you going to call this project? So I'm going to call this a PMI AC presentation project. All right, and then let me hit Finish and it's going to go and create it. Now, friends, what just happened here? I mean, if you stop and think about this, it looks very simple, but as project managers, this is empowering. Why? 15 years ago, as project managers, if I wanted a central repository, a project website, who do I call to get this? What? Yeah, IT. I filled out a ticket request. Dear IT, I bought you three rounds of Guinness last night. Can you get me a project site? And then you wait, you wait, you wait, and what happens? Depending on the priority, how big, how small, how important or not important the project is, you have to wait forever. With a platform like this, IT can work with you, shape what your PMIS site should be or could be, and I'm empowered to help myself. Now, I went ahead and kind of created one and pre-populated one. So, so this is the presentation. Now, what do I get in my project site? I, you know, I have a bunch of stuff. Automatically, I have all the project documents here from my risk checklist, WBS, what have you. In fact, if I'm using a non-Windows computer, even on an iPad, with the built-in Microsoft Office capability, I can jump in there and start editing the document directly on the browser. It's kind of like Google Apps, but just 100 times better. Yes, Gary? She works for Microsoft. So, um, and then not only does it allow me to work on this directly on the browser, if I do have Office on my computer, I can certainly edit it directly in working on the same piece of information. Now, what's the value in, in here? And, and, and friends, listen, this is very, very important. One of the things where we fail a lot with technology, and I myself am guilty of this, almost always, we force people into using complex systems. Imagine having somebody from using email, and they're not full-time project managers one day, and then suddenly tomorrow you say, you got to use Project Server or Microsoft Project. You have to do it. Change is hard. What you want to achieve, friends, is this idea of sustainable adoption. And to drive sustainable adoption, you have to take baby steps. And that's the power of the Microsoft platform. While Project, Project Server, SharePoint is great, guess what? You can use tools people use today, such as mobile, office, email, what have you. 
I mean, one of the things, right, that's clear to me, especially in this new generation of workers, people are comfortable with mobile. People are comfortable with office. What if we can bridge that gap and enhance the experience as a team? What would that look like? So I recorded a short video of how all these technologies can work together alongside existing technologies people use today. So let's see what that looks like. Meet my colleague Alex. He and I are working on putting together a presentation for our boss. Thanks to SharePoint 2013, we're able to easily centralize and manage all related artifacts and communications for this project. On a typical day, Alex would start working from home using his Mac. He would check his email from a browser and start work from there. Looks like Alex is reviewing the task of the project, and he has some questions for me about the project. Just by using the browser, he's able to instant message me using technologies like Link. One of the key benefits of SharePoint 2013 is a deep integration with existing tools that we already use, like Microsoft Office, smartphones, and even web-based technologies. So even if I'm out and about, I'm still not at the office yet, I can easily respond to Alex on my phone and update my tasks. The beauty with SharePoint 2013 is that I can continue working with Alex once I get to the office. He just assign me a task on the project site and look at what, what happens. It automatically shows up on my task list in Microsoft Outlook. Isn't that cool or what? Additionally, within Outlook, I can email the entire team directly using this neat feature called Site Mailbox. The Site Mailbox is available not only in Outlook, but it's the same Site Mailbox that the team can see and interact with directly on the project site. The Site Mailbox also provides visibility to all the documents I have in the project site. So what do you think? Are you excited? So. Let me, let me carry on with that story. I am. This is the new way to work together. <laughs> Sounds like a bad, you know, you know those bad uh, Chinese Kung Fu movie, there's dubbing going on. <laughs> so let's, let's stop and think about it. it. It wasn't too much. Alex started working from home on his Mac, he's used to. Talking to me, I am on the browser, I pick up on my phone, respond, update my task. And as soon as I update my task, updates on Outlook, updates on the project site, it's cool. Because as we all know today, project managers, oh, I got updated in Excel, I got updated in my email, I got updated in the most powerful database out there called Access. We do that all the time. And we get paid too much from project managers if we do that. But what if, what if I can use tools that I'm familiar with and if they all work together in harmony? Now, another example. So, and, and this actually happened. Uh, I want to share this example with one of my customers. So I had a customer. Um, I worked with them about two years ago. You know, at AppPoint, uh, where we, we provide a lot of solutions for collaboration, project management included. And so one of the government customers I worked with, they said, hey, Docs, you know, we, uh, we have 100 projects in a given month. We manage everything through email and network shares, and, and I know we can do better. We need a, a, a solid PMIS that's easy for people to use. And they had SharePoint, so we helped them. We coached them. We tailored the use of SharePoint to something like this, where their schedule, their documents, their communications, everything's here. It's great. One thing I also found out, at the end of the month, they had a process where every project manager would send an expense report in Excel via email to, let's call it Mr. David in accounting. So Mr. David in accounting will get 100 of these Excel files, and his job is to put together a monthly organization project expenses. You know Mr. David, right? So I talked to Mr. David, and I said, Mr. David, how much time do you spend doing this process, collating all project expenses? He said, I spend about seven, eight hours on a given month, and I, I've been doing this for the last six years. I go, what if I told you, Mr. David, I can help you cut down that time in half? You see, uh, we help your company 
use your SharePoint investment as for project management. And what I can do is somehow when project managers enter their expenses here, it's going to go to another SharePoint site where you can go to it and look. He said, stop, stop. Sonny, he called me Sonny. He said, Sonny, I'm retiring in two years. I don't want to learn anything new. All I need is my Excel and email. If you're telling me to use this new thing on the day called SharePoint, no worries. Uh, I'm fine spending eight hours every month. You know Mr. David, yeah. So I said, all right, Mr. David, forget it. You're not going to use this thing called SharePoint. I'm going to show you a feature in Excel. Okay? What's that? What we're going to do, we're going to tell project managers to put their expenses in, in their project site, which you don't need to go to, you don't care for. But as soon as they put it there, automatically it's going to show up in an Excel file in your My Documents folder. You don't need to go anywhere. It's, it's right there. We're going to cut out email totally. Really? I go, yeah, let me show you. So, you know, I, I, I fired up Excel. And, okay, so... So I said, okay, so Mr. Uh, David, is, you know, we, we got an Excel workbook, so let's call this a PMI uh, annual conference expenses, okay? So let's say as a part of preparation for this project, I had to buy a projector, so very simple items and cost. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this information, friends, and convert it to what's called an Excel table. So as soon as I do that, in Excel, and this is nothing out of the ordinary, it's part of Excel, there's this thing that will pop up, it's called Publish and Allow Sync, right? So, so what happened is, when I click on that button, this little thing popped up. It says, where do you want to sync this information to? So my, my goal here, friends, is I want to take that Excel information and essentially connect it to this project site. Y'all with me? Yes? Um, pardon my heavy southern accent. I, uh, sometimes I can't help myself and keep saying y'all. I'm from the deep south, Manila, Philippines. <laughs> the land of men. Okay. All right. So, so I just copied that uh, project site address and I gave it a name. I'm going to hit publish. And since this is a Microsoft tool, it's going to talk to the other Microsoft tool and it's going to connect it, right? So as soon as it's, it's connected, it's done. Let me go back to my project site, friends, and let me go ahead and pull up that expense spreadsheet. All right, so it should be so. Yeah, there you go, PMI expenses. Okay. So what do we have going on here? So now I've got the Excel file sitting on Mr. David's computer. It's connected to this project site. Anytime the project team spends on something on the project, all they have to do, they don't even have to email Mr. David in the spirit of having a PMIS, a one-stop shop. We're going to put everything here. For this project, we bought a car, and it's $80,000. That's called government contracting. Okay. So, so I just put it there. Now, how would Mr. David know? As a part of this technology, and I'm sure some of you are familiar, we can set these things called alerts. We can put a rule and say any time a new expense is added, alert Mr. David in accounting. Y'all follow me? Yes? It's called micromanagement. And, and as soon as I enter that, I go back, Mr. David would get the uh, alert, and you know a new expense has been entered. Um, and then all he has to do is hit that button called synchronize, and voila, that piece of information is now available in Mr. David's copy of the Excel spreadsheet. He didn't have to go to that project site. But wait, there's more. Mr. David is looking at all these receipts and invoices, and he saw, hold on, guys. You guys didn't buy a car. You bought carpet. And, and you didn't spend 80000 You spent 800 bucks. And then Mr. David, in accounting, can simply synchronize it back. And as soon as he does that, what happens? That same piece of information is now synchronized on that project site. That's what I call project management on your terms. What do you guys think? You like this? Now, who doesn't know about this feature? Can you raise your hand? I just want a quick sample. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, ducks, I mean, you're trying to sell me Microsoft stuff. This is all new stuff. I don't think we'll get this. This is actually not new. 
This feature was introduced in Excel 2003 and SharePoint 2003. It's a 12-year-old technology. So after I showed this to Mr. David, I went back and, and, and kind of coached him and said, you know what, Mr. David, so now what you can do is you can connect this to the 99 other project sites. And what he did, so he had 99 other spreadsheets connected to the 99 project site. And then he has like a summary sheet. You know how in Excel he created a summary sheet that takes all the information, all the sheets, and he has pivot tables and pivot charts for his like master summary. Y'all follow me? And then I said, in three months, I'm going to come back and ask you how much time you spent on this process. So three months later, I come back and say, you know, Docs, instead of eight hours, I only spent about five, six hours in the last two months. But I think I'll get better at this. Thank you. And it's all in Excel. I don't have to deal with the email. Mr. David, for this one process, saved two hours. He found it quite valuable. But even broader, from an organizational perspective, I also found out that before, Mr. David had to spend overtime because he would get these Excel at the last minute from Project Manager. So he had to be paid overtime before. And in the last three months, he wasn't paid overtime at all. That's what I mean as project managers. How can we enable and support the business and be more responsive to everyone's needs? And technology allows us to do this. And it doesn't have to be new technologies. We have this stuff already, friends. Now, with SharePoint. We live in the age of mobile. We should be able to facilitate project management on the go. You want to get everybody on the same page? You can't be stuck on, oh, I need to VPN to work, to update that information, or else I just can't do it. That's why we end up using email. So how are we doing as organizations to support this? The second step to utilize the right solution is once we get people on the same page, use the relevant tools, and ensure that these tools flow accordingly, how do we manage effectively? Again, today, I'm, I'm guilty of this myself sometimes, is we rely heavily on email to manage projects. Now, uh, I understand in some cases we just don't have a choice, but I do believe with relevant tools beyond email, we can be much, much more effective in managing projects. We need to be more proactive versus reactive. So for example, Microsoft Project is a wonderful, wonderful tool if you go past beyond the basic project collaboration needs. So as an example, let's say, let me go back to our project site here. So friends, let's say, you know, we're working on this, and suddenly this project became much bigger. And right now on this project site, uh, while SharePoint is great to serve as my PMIS, I have, uh, in fact, I have a task list here. You know, people have tasks assigned to them and whatnot. The limitation, I would say, just by relying on SharePoint alone, while well, having basic tasks and action items is great, notice there's nowhere here where I can start putting in dependencies. And certainly when you get to that point, that's something that uh, you'll need a more advanced tool to leverage. The good news is, just like how SharePoint interacts with office tools like Excel or Outlook or Word or PowerPoint, notice it interacts with project as well. So I've, I've already pre-created this. So let's say I have a much, much more complex project. So let's say I have a marketing um, campaign I need to do where I have dependencies, I have different roles, and uh, I need to put in effort estimates as well other than just duration, that's where Microsoft Project comes in really handy. And the beauty of this is these tools aren't disjointed. They all work together. Once I have all this information updated, I can save it. And once I save it, I can Certainly, as long as I, I assign it to the right resources and they're part of the project, I can go back to my project uh, uh, management system and I can look at, okay, the Brisbane marketing campaign. I can go there. And from a browser perspective, my users, they don't need to have Microsoft Project. 
they can come here, they can look at the schedule. And so let me pull that up. If they're assigned to this uh, project, there's tasks assigned to them. And it's going to load in a second. They'll see their task assignment and they can update their tasks directly here. Right? What's how much hours have you spent and why? They can do it here. They can do it in Microsoft Project. If they want to interact with, you know, look at some of the documents, for example, for the project. There's uh, the, the project collaboration site, which is powered by SharePoint. All the necessary information is there for the documents and checklists and templates and what have you. Y'all see that? All works together. Now, if we want to track relevant metrics, for example, so let me minimize this real quick. As we want to manage projects, it's one thing to manage a single project, a single set of resources. But then as we step back, I believe a lot of us here work on multiple projects, work on multiple set of resources. How can we be effective with that? That's where a tool like Project Server or Project Online comes in. For those that are not familiar, again, I, I mentioned earlier, right? For collaboration, there's SharePoint. For scheduling, single project scheduling, single project uh, resource planning, there's Microsoft Projects on the desktop. But then at that organizational level, if you want to see the big picture, there's a technology called Project Server, which is available to organizations if they want to install it in-house. And however, if they want to uh, deploy it quickly and uh, don't want to uh, uh, invest too much on capital expenses, but just flip it over to operational expenses, they can take advantage of Office 365 Project Online, which essentially is the cloud version of Project Server. So what do we get for... Uh, project online. So let me show you a couple of things, friends. So as an organization, all right, so I can certainly look at the big picture. Let me go back. And as an organization, I can look at a couple of things. First of all, with project online, as long as you're the right stakeholder, you have visibility to all the different projects. So I can zoom into specific projects, I can look at the schedule, I can look at uh, the different elements of that project. But what if I need to look at this quickly um, and understand the health of my project? I can certainly do so. And let's see. All right. So it's loading. I can set up uh, reports. I can set up and measure key performance indicators that's important to me. And then I can display it accordingly. Now, reports abound in Project Project Online. So, for example, when we think about reporting, the typical the typical idea we have. Oh, let's make sure the internet's loading here. Refresh. There you go. So I'll show you a couple other reporting mechanisms here. So coupled with other Microsoft technology, when we think about reports and KPI and metrics, you know, we think of things like dashboard, right? And by the way, that's a secret to career success. You want to get promoted at work when you get back to the office like on tomorrow or uh, Thursday, you look at your boss for ADI and say one word, dashboard. Instant promotion. So you can build these real-time visuals of project health and project information in different ways. There's a lot of options, but one of the things I want to show you, which is pretty slick, is a technology used by Project Online called Power BI. What we're going to see is it's essentially built in Excel using this technology called Power BI. The scenario is it's a global company with projects around the world, but we layered it against a map of the world, and then it's going to show you initially all the projects around the world, and then you can uh, uh, filter it according to key areas you want to see. So, for example, I know it's kind of small, but um, I can say, show me all the IT projects. So, if I click on IT, uh, then it's going to filter all IT projects around the world in key metrics that I want to see. Y'all see that? Or if I want to see a uh, region specific, let's show me all IT projects in Brazil, then I can click on that. It's, it's going to zoom in as well. So this another way to provide you real-time visibility as to the health of the projects. And it could be as real-time as you want, 
or you can certainly uh, filter it as much or as less as you want. Another option for reporting, so if you want the traditional Gantt chart view of your report, you can certainly do that. So I can look at tracking view or summary view. I have a view here that shows me all the uh, KPIs. There you go. So let me scroll down here. If you want to put your own metric on project health and you want to put in your red, amber, green status, you can define what those means, and based on how the project is doing, it'll give you a quick glance on the health of the different projects you have. And again, all this built in to the platform. Now, what about resources? I know resources is one of the challenging things, especially in IT organizations. Uh, I used to run an IT organization, and I deal with this a lot. I don't know about you, but I play a game of Tetris every Tuesday. Resource planning, you have this massive Excel looking at, can we take on more work? Which developer is doing what? We're trying to figure all that out, utilization. But as a part of the platform, there's a resource management capability where as long as the, the resources are reporting accordingly, we can certainly see, you know, let me pick a couple of resources here and show me their availability and what their assignments are like. While that's loading, let me look at availability as well. And it's going to generate real time. I pick a couple people, Adam, Alex, and somebody else. They'll show me what these resources are doing, what their availability and utilization are. And in fact, I can even drill down, friends, on a time period and look at what projects they're working on. So Alex has this much availability. He's working on these following projects, et cetera. And today, how do we do this? You know, today, a lot of this information yeah, we get it every week, but guess what? It's three weeks old. We want to make a decision around it. It's almost too late. This piece of information is critical, especially in major initiatives. From a resource perspective, if you want to manage your work effectively, there's a lot of different ways to track tasks assigned to me. If you saw in the video earlier, if you're using the Microsoft family of products, once a resource gets assigned a task in the project schedule, it will show up in Outlook, which, by the way, will show up on his or her phone if it syncs with Outlook. Y'all with me? I'm 50% though. 50%, 100%. Or if I want a one-stop shop, I can go to my personal in, in, in this platform, what used to be called a My Site. There's a uh, section that shows all my tasks, not only for my projects, but all my Outlook tasks as well. Task is task is task. And you can look at it from a big picture view. What do you guys think so far? Useful? Yeah, he thinks it's useful. Everybody else? Yes? Now, what about reports, Docs? I mean, you talk about dashboard. You showed me some reports. How flexible is this? So I want to share. Uh, customer I'm working with today. So this is, uh, we have a, a, a app point. We, uh, we're, a people, we're, we're a company of 2,000 people and, and growing around the world. We're in 13 countries. And uh, one of the fastest growing business we have is our Middle East business. And we're working with the Ministry of Labor in Saudi where we're helping them. And, and it's, it's a wonderful organization. They have a very mature project management process. Um, but the technology is not up to speed with how they, they're growing as an organization. So we're helping them um, aggregate seven different organizations, seven different PMISs or project management information system using the Microsoft stack. And then we're rolling out to a, a all of IT dashboard for their uh, minister to look at key performance indicators that's relevant to them. In addition, at a PM level, each PM would have their own Excel project summary that they have access real time on their desktop or on the um, uh, uh, project sites as well, which is also accessible via mobile. And then these KPIs, we also, through Microsoft technology, were able to put logic and automation. I mean, it's one thing if I keep looking at this report, but I want to be proactively alerted. So based on the workflows that are built in, I can say, hey, if this is red, go ahead and send me a high importance email or send me a text message. Go look at this. So all this automation can be done with your Microsoft investment. Now, that's the second step. 
to utilize the right project management tool uh, for the right needs is you have to look at your tools and ensure that it helps you to manage effectively, be more proactive versus reactive. And then the third criteria or the third step on how you utilize the right solution for PPM is you want to make sure your technology investment helps you grow and win consistently. As organizations mature, project needs varies and needs change through time. So how do you do that? And when we talk about winning, right, what does winning look like? I hope it's not this guy. Winning is different. Not only for every organization, I would argue within an organization, project management needs varies. Again, today, everybody is a project manager. Though people in sales and marketing don't want to admit to it, I call them reluctant project managers. And they rely on email, Excel, Dropbox, Basecamp. I mean, it's okay, but from a discipline perspective, we don't have visibility into all those. And then we have the more mature, where we're running multi-million dollar projects, there's processes. What I'm saying is your Microsoft investment allows you and supports you to do all this. Now, uh, another scenario, another example I want to share. So let me go back to my example uh, uh, PMI site here. So, so let me go, uh, let's see, where's my homepage? There you go. So here's the thing, right? So let me, I want to share this story because this was for another customer. So one of the things that's so unique with this is depending on your needs, um, most likely there's a solution that's part of this platform that can support you. So uh, I was working with another customer and they're in the southeastern United States. And what they do is they open gasoline stations. And for some of you in that business, they don't really own all the resources building the gasoline station. They have project managers managing vendors that build the gasoline station. Y'all follow me? And these project managers would have to do regular visits and check. And part of what they do is they check the quality of the build. So, you know, from, from the gasoline station building to the post to whatever. And if there's something that doesn't look right, these project managers have to document it. They have to take pictures, sometimes videos, sometimes they have to interview the contractors. And then they have to send this back to headquarters. Now, as you, as you may imagine, you can email pictures, but videos... Not really. And they end up literally copying it to a USB file if it's video and then overnight shipping. Because it's that important. Because if there's any issue, they have to report to some government agency or something. And not only do they have to send it physically, the cost, that piece of video is now separate than everything else that they've been tracking for the project. So they ask, is there a better way where not only we can centralize all this project relevant information, but we can also include videos, audio, pictures, and whatnot. I go, of course, because as a part of this suite of technology, one of the uh, offerings or capability uh, that, that comes with it is a social collaboration tool called uh, Yammer. And Yammer, I believe, is a perfect communication and collaboration platform for project management. And it integrates with SharePoint, integrates with Project Project Online. And there's mobile capabilities, too. So for example, like in this case, right? Um, uh, I, I have a project. I had a team help me build this presentation. And I know they're rooting for me right now. They're wondering how things are going. Wouldn't it be great if I report to them that things are going well? So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to take a picture with my technology called a selfie stick. And I'm going to do this on the project site because as soon as I do this, in terms of being more responsive, they will be able to see right away uh, because they'll be alerted and whatnot. And let me bring up the camera. There you go. All right. You guys can smile because I'm going to tag you on Facebook later. All right. Four, five, four, three, 
two, one. There you go. All right. Thank you for being such a good sport. But as soon as I did that, guess what? That piece of information is now available, or it's being uploaded right now, to this project site. And that piece of information will, will not only be stored in the same place, but also random people will gain access to it. None of this, I'll email here, or I'll send a USB, one-stop shop. Searchable, auditable, for relevant people. Needs varies and needs change. And again, a lot of different options. And before I end, I want to share another scenario, which is becoming more and more important these days. Security and compliance. Uh, I live in DC. You know, the fear of information falling into the wrong hands in the wrong time is an issue. And it's becoming more and more an issue with IP theft being hacked and whatnot. I work a lot with the government and they said, Docs, is there a way, because we're a very mature project organization and people are mobile, but can we lock information so that other than accessing the project site at work, the only other place they can access it is at their house, nowhere else, even if they have the right username and password. I go, of course, right? So we helped them, we put this geofencing technology, we said, ducks his iPhone, if he's at work, all he has to do is log in using a password and he can get to the project site. Outside of work, the only other place is his house. Anywhere else, he can't access it. What does that look like? So let's, let's quickly check this out. So I, I got my iPad, right? And I was at, in my house, I logged in to my project site, my username and password. It detected that I'm not at work. So the first thing it told me, okay, prove to me you're in the right location. So I bring my phone out, or in this case my iPad, I guess. I take a picture with an app. You know how your phones have GPS locations? It reported back to headquarters and say, Ducks is in the right place. As soon as that happens, my project site's low. But wait, there's more. <laughs> How are we so sure Ducks is accessing at the right place, at the right time? Back at work, the chief compliance officers, they logged into my project management system. They want to look at, let's see who accessed the project information. Oh, Ducks just logged in. Where did he log in from? This location. Where is that? I don't know what that longitude latitude means. Let me click on it and pull it up on the map. Oh, Ducks, what? right here when he was accessing this requirements document. Welcome to the world of Big Brother. What do you guys think? Cool stuff, isn't it? To be responsive, we got a right to use the right project management solution that allows us to collaborate efficiently, manage effectively, and win consistently regardless of what the requirements are. And the requirements are changing. I say it's an exciting time because we have all these tools at the tip of our hands. Thank you for joining us, and before I let you go, on the count of three, all together, we're gonna to shout this. One, two, three, shift happens. Thanks again, and what I'm gonna do, if you fill out this evaluation form, I'm gonna send you, I recorded this session, the video recording, the PowerPoint, and all the different resources I talked about. So please fill out the evaluation form, and uh, enjoy the rest of the session.